Hello, I'm Michelle from Team 6030J, and today I'd like to show you our engineering notebook. Our engineering notebook, at the time of the state, consisted of two graph-ruled books and a section of printed code in the back. We never got to a third book. In total, we had about 300 pages of written content and about 60 pages of printed code. On the very first pages, we had a key for the color tabs and the table of contents. We wrote an extensive introduction section covering our team information, an overview of the game and its rules, possible strategies to implement, our design process, and a tournament timeline. Much of this, by the way, is not required according to the official judge guide. We just like to include it for quick reference. Then, we included a brainstorming section where we compiled information and references for various subsections that we may need to use and weighed their pros and cons in these charts. Now on to the daily progress entries. At first, our entries were not very good. As you can see, they're only about a half page long to a page long, with sparse writing and minimal diagrams. These entries definitely did not meet the design rubric criteria. There was a description on what we did, but not on how we came up with our solutions and why we chose that specific solution. However, in the later entries, such as these on maybe page 70, by now we had improved our entries so that they really demonstrate to the judges that we understand what we are doing. Here is a good example of an effective journal entry. At the top, we have the attendance line and a short summary sentence of the whole entry. Next, you can see the first topic about the tray. This section talks about the problem and why it needs to be changed. These numbered points are the solutions that we came up with after brainstorming. After that, we have a short analysis of all the possible solutions, weighing the pros and cons, and deciding which is the best option to use. A cost-benefit analysis chart would also work here. Remember to justify why you didn't use a solution as well as why you did use the one you chose. After that, we describe the implementation of the solution and the result after testing. Finally, a brief note on what we plan to do moving on, whether we are keeping the solution or making further improvements. At the end of the video, there will be a flip through of more daily progress entries. Over the course of the year, we found ways to help out our local community through volunteering at tournaments and mentoring younger teams. This year, our team volunteered at six or so events as cures, field resetters, and referees. We make sure to document this service work, as well as any additional scouting in our community outreach entries, which are located throughout the journal. This entry is a discussion of a software component. While you should include software progress within your daily entries, this special entry addresses a major component that we can reference easily in the future. It also acts as a summary component for complex coding processes. This entry was a major design update for us as it talks about a major choice that we made during early season. Titled Rethinking Our Design, it explains our thought process and reasoning behind the decision as well as our plan moving forward from this point and citations for the references we researched. We really wanted to express to the judges why we felt the need to completely scrap our old robot and build something new in a short window of time. Here is volume 2 of our engineering notebook. There are a few formatting changes that were made to this volume to make our information easier to access and understand for both ourselves and the judges. For example, I improved the color coding in the table of contents, adding short titles for the daily entries and small adjustments. This entry is a tournament analysis entry. In this entry, we start off with a short overview of our performance during the tournament in this section. Then we talk about scouting. Our scouting system is fairly extensive, which is definitely not required, but helps us during alliance selection. Next is the skills challenge section. Afterwards, we have a full list of our qualification matches, including our score, autonomous winner, and our opponents. Elimination matches are next. Here, we discuss how we approached alliance selection and our results from eliminations. Finally, we have the longest section, the discussion and analysis section. This section is where we talk about the major recurring problems we had during the tournament and how we plan on addressing those problems in the future. Another design update, this time analyzing our performance up to winter break. Graphs, charts, and diagrams are always good for entries like this. 
In this entry, we look to optimize our tilter, justifying our building choices by researching and calculating the math behind the subsystem, as well as documenting past experimentation and references. These pages are not a part of the daily journaling in order for them to be found and reviewed quickly in one concise entry. Here is our daily journaling flip through. These pages came mostly from the second journal, as our journaling skills improved over the course of the year to become a better sample of what the design rubric is looking for. Judges expect this kind of improvement. As you may notice, a lot of these pages were written by one person, as seen with the similar handwriting on each one. This is generally a bad practice, because judges want to see that everyone on the team was able to contribute. Try your best to have all your team members journal on a regular basis. Thank you for watching. I hope this helped.